Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, March 5th. Today's topic is awesome uses for Google Drawings in your classroom. Our special guest today is Eric Kurtz. Your show hosts are Peggy George. I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy to introduce Eric for us. Thank you, Lori, for our great kickoff. And we are so excited to have Eric Kurtz here to share with us today about Google Drawings. We have a fantastic advisory team for Classroom 20 Live, and they're always on the lookout for great educators to teach and inspire us in our shows. Maureen Tomanis had the opportunity to hear Eric present and said he would be perfect for our audience. So I immediately started exploring his many tutorials and resources online. Wow. I have learned so much from participating in his weekly webinars and viewing the recordings of past presentations. And now I follow him everywhere. And I think you will too after you've heard from him today. He's been in education for 24 years. And he's currently the technology integration specialist for Stark Portage Area Computer Consortium in Canton, Ohio. He oversees Google Apps for education implementation, training and support, as well as online learning and other tech integration initiatives. He's obviously an authorized Google Ed trainer and a Google certified innovator. And he provides Google Apps trainings to schools and conferences, not only in Ohio, but across the country. He um, co-hosts a bi-weekly EdTech podcast called The State of Tech. You might want to check that out. And his show is in both video and audio formats. And he's so great about posting all of these online. So you can go back and watch recordings if you can't participate live. And he also runs another EdTech website called the Apps User Group. That's a link in our LiveBinder today. And it, it is a site to connect and help schools who are using Google Apps for Education. So that's a site you may want to check out too. So thank you, Eric, for joining us today. And to get things started, I'd like to ask you to answer our newbie question and then to jump right into your presentation, because I know you have lots to share with us. So Eric, what exactly are graphic organizers? And why are they important tools for learning? All right, well, hey, thanks so much. Uh, first of all, just want to make sure that my audio is coming through OK. Can you guys hear me well? Your audio is terrific. Perfect. Just want to make sure before I launch into something, <laughs> and definitely stop me at any point if anything uh, isn't coming through OK. Uh, yeah, so when we're going to be looking today at using Google Drawings with, with, uh, with schools and with students, graphic organizers is definitely one of the areas that it, it's a great fit for. And so if somebody has not done much with graphic organizers in the past, the main idea is it's some sort of a, a diagram that is going to help students to organize their ideas, to either uh, analyze something they've read, like maybe they've read a story, and now they want to put down the characteristics of the main you know, protagonist of the story. Or maybe they want to explain the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. So it could be something they're analyzing. On the other hand, it could be something they're preparing for. Maybe they need to write a, uh, an essay or a story themselves, and they need to plot out um, their story, or they need to figure figure out the main idea and the supporting details. And so a graphic organizer is basically a diagram, uh, boxes and circles and arrows and so forth, that allows students to be able to organize their thoughts, either something they've been looking at or something that they're, they're creating. And, and why this is important, well, the biggest reason I would say is uh, a big focus we have in education right now is focusing on the four C's, which is uh, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. 
four main skills that our students really need in their future to prepare them for the, the changing future that, it, that is coming for them. And um, one of those four C's, critical thinking, is a fantastic match for graphic organizers because it does allow the students to do things like examine relationships between ideas and to see the connections that exist, to organize ideas, to classify information, to analyze something they've read, to plan. All of that is critical thinking. And so it's a great tool. Now, it might be on paper and pencil, and that's perfectly fine. But of course, today we're going to be focusing on how to do this digitally and some of the benefits you get from that as well. All right. So let me go ahead and I'm going to launch into my presentation. And I'm going to share my screen. And um, as I'm doing so, I'm going to make sure that it does look OK here. So uh, let me find my uh, find the screen I want to share. And I'm going to just double check and let you guys uh, let me know, um, is that coming through OK? Are you seeing my slideshow of Google Drawings for Schools? Should be seeing a slideshow that says Google Drawings for Schools. And if I move back and forth, hopefully you guys are seeing that. Does that look OK? All right, I am assuming so. I'm not hearing any any uh, feedback from anybody that that is coming through. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, but Eric. I'm assuming so everything okay. is great. Okay. I forgot that you aren't able to see the chat right now, so we're that's typing correct. away. Yes, everything is that's great. Okay. Oh, so, I'm so sorry too. You're all I just, set. Again, I just didn't want to launch into something before uh, I was sure that it looked okay, and so now I will just proceed on. So thank you so much for the Excellent. verbal feedback on that. All right. So today I'm going to be chatting about some creative uses for Google Drawings in schools, graphic organizers being one, but we're going to look at a number of other ones as well. And obviously all the resources have been put together so nicely in the live binder that is a phenomenal location. At the same time, if for any reason you're viewing this in the future and you know aren't able to get to that, I also try to maintain um, nice, friendly, short URLs for all of my sessions. So this particular one, if you were to go to tiny.cc slash Kurtz45, just my last name, Kurtz, and the number 45, that will take you to a web page that um, I maintain with all of my resources related to this as well. Another benefit of that is chances are things will change over time. I mean, I'll probably add a few more you know, ideas and some more templates and some more help guides. And so as far as a safe place to know you can always go to get all the resources for this tiny.cc slash Kurtz45. And where that pops you out to is this page here. Um, I run a, uh, a blog called Control Alt Achieve where I put all of my resources. And one of the pages there is my Google Drawings resource page. And that link will shoot you out to this page. And throughout this session today, we'll be referring to a lot of the resources here. But as I continue to add more to this over time, you can rest assured that that link, tiny.cz slash Kurtz45, will get you to all of those resources. Fantastic. Uh, of course, sure you guys already know me, so that's fine. Uh, fantastic introduction. Thank you so much. We'll go ahead and move past, move past that. Um, and we'll talk about what we're going to be looking at here today. So the agenda for this session is a very brief overview of just what is Google Drawings. Uh, I know some people, sounds like, have used it, and that was fantastic. It was great to see that in the, the poll at the beginning. But we had a big chunk of folks who have not really played around with it before, so it's worth spending just a few moments on a quick overview of what is Google Drawings. And then after that, we're going to do how it can be used in schools. So I'm just going to look at three main topics. And there's more than this. This is not the only way it could be used. But I'm picking three that are some pretty good examples, graphic organizers, teaching math, and desktop publishing. So let's um, go ahead and we'll skip past all that. We know those things. So let's go ahead and start with a quick overview of what Google Drawings is. So it is one of the five tools that is provided by Google as part of the Google Drive suite. So if you're used to using Google Docs, most people are very familiar with that. That's one of the five tools. There's Google Docs. There's Google Slides, which is the multimedia presentation tool, kind of like PowerPoint. There's Google Sheets, which is the spreadsheet program like Excel. There's Google Forms, which is great for making uh, quizzes and uh, 
questionnaires and polls, and then there's Google Drawings. And I think sometimes it does sort of get overlooked. It's um, not as well known or as widely used as Google Docs and some of the other tools, and that's unfortunate because it's a really neat tool that does a lot of great things. It is a tool that can be used for creating diagrams, flowcharts, drawings, uh, images, things like that. And of course, like all the Google tools, you can collaborate with other people. So it doesn't have to be just something you're working on by yourself. Students can work together. Uh, students can turn these in electronically. Teachers can grade them, return them. It can all be done uh, through collaboration. Um, it's got a lot of neat tools we're going to look at here in just a moment. You can insert shapes and lines and texts and images. Uh, you can put connectors between the items for diagrams. You can add hyperlinks to jump out to websites. And of course, you can import and export anything you create. So let me do this real quick. Let me go ahead and just show you very quickly what a Google Drawing looks like. I'm going to throw a couple of things on it just so you can sort of just see the, the general idea. Now, having said that, though, just as a quick reminder, because we're doing an awful lot in a, in a short session here, um, we're not going to go through like every button you could click and uh, all the details on how it works. So do not forget. On my website, which again was um, linked in there in the live binder, but also at tiny.cc slash Kurtz45, I do have a section under Google Drawings with general resources, and the very first one is a very detailed help guide on how to use Google Drawings. And that help guide is about, uh, about 11 pages long. And so please, please feel free to refer to that help guide to get all the gory details on how to create drawings and how to add shapes and add images and it just goes on and on and on with text and connectors and moving objects and collaborating and publishing and all that kind of stuff. So there's an awful lot of good resources in there that will go into more detail than we'll even be able to go into here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over just temporarily to my Google Drive, so I can find it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Jump over to my Google Drive. Uh, so this is my Google Drive on one of my demo accounts here. And from Google Drive, normally this is where you go to, of course, find all your files that you've got, but this is also where you go to create new files. So in Google Drive, if I go up to my New button and give a click on that, that's where I can make a new Google document or a Google spreadsheet or a Google slideshow. Or if I go down to the More button, that's where I can do a Google Form or a Google Drawing. Now, that might be one reason why a lot of people don't know a lot about drawings, is it is kind of hidden away. It's not up there with docs and sheets and slides, uh, but it is definitely accessible through the More option. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to make a new Google Drawing. And once I do, ta-da, it will go ahead and create this blank Google Drawing for me. Now, again, we're not going to go into great detail here other than to show you the very, very typical basic things with Google Drawings. And that is, first of all, you can insert tons of stuff into a Google Drawing. So if I were to go up to my Insert menu, I can insert things like text boxes, images. Here, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. I know my resolution is kind of high, so we'll make those uh, menus larger for you there. So if I go up to my Insert menu, I can insert text boxes, images, word art, lines, shapes, tables. So let's just do a shape, for example. I could come here to insert a shape, and I could choose from lots of pre-made shapes, arrows, callouts, mathematical symbols. Let's just say I want to insert a simple rounded rectangle. So I click on that. I get some crosshairs, click and drag that out, and boom, there we go. I have to run a shape into my drawing. Now, once you get that shape in there, you can do tons of stuff with it. You can click in the middle and drag it around. You can click on the uh, corners and resize it. You could uh, fill it. You've got a paint can button up here. Put a different fill color inside of it. Change the color of the border. Change the thickness of the border. Uh, change whether the border is solid or dotted. All sorts of things you can do to it. Um, if it is a shape that has some special characteristics, sometimes you'll also get a little yellow diamond on it. Like this is a rounded rectangle. So I get this little yellow diamond that I can click to either increase or decrease to accentuate or reduce uh, that roundedness of the rectangle. And so depending upon the shape, you may have some yellow diamonds you can adjust as well. Um, I can also type in the shape, simply give it a double click. And I can go ahead and type in some sample 
text. And once I've got that text in there, of course, again, I can center that, and I could change you know, its size, and I could change the font that I'm using, and I could make it bold or italics or whatever. So loads and loads of things you can do with any shape you throw in there. You can even rotate them, which is what you can do with a little circle that sticks out of the top there. So if you want to put something at an angle rather than having it just straight up and down, you can do that as well. Um, so in addition to that, like I said, we can insert just text boxes. You can insert images. So you can grab images from uploading them, taking a snapshot, grabbing them from your drive, running a search. We may see some other options as well today as we go through this. Um, and then, of course, you can insert lines if you want to have lines and arrows and connectors. There's even a scribble tool if you just want to draw right onto the drawing. Another thing to be aware of is if you have more than one shape in there, we'll throw on a smiley face here as well. If you have more than one shape, and we better make him, uh, there we go. Uh, and by the way, his yellow diamond, I can make him be a frowny face or a smiley face. That's what his yellow diamond allows. Uh, if you have more than one shape, um, you can move your shapes around. If you do have um, more than one object, you can also uh, do things like put objects in front of or behind each other. And so if I put an object in front of another object, I can go to the Arrange menu and I can even order them to send them forwards or behind each other. I can group objects together. I can even insert what we call connectors, where I can connect objects together. So I can click from one object, drag out a connector, and attach it to, oops, try that again. Didn't get that one exactly connected there. Try that again. Click and drag out, and then and then find a connection on the other to click it into. Boink, there we go. And then you can even connect objects together, and as you move them around, they'll stay connected. So that's a very, very quick overview of just some of the things you can do with Google Drawings as far as some of the basic tools. Now, of course, during that entire time, I could have people collaborating with me so students could be working with each other. And oh, oh there goes the mouse again. <laughs> Hang on a second. Uh, come on, I'm going to wiggle it around a little bit, see if that makes it. Come on, wake up, mouse. Yeah, here we go. OK. <laughs> I don't know if I trust this mouse here today. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, good. it's good again. Uh, but during this whole time, we could be collaborating and sharing. Students could be working together. And when I'm all done with this, I can take this drawing I've created. I could download it if I wanted to, turn it into a PDF or an image. I could publish it to the web. I could share it, just like we share most things in Google Drawings, where I could share it with other people or get a shareable link. So a lot of neat options for uh, creating with drawings. So what can we do with that? So now that we know the very basics of what drawings can do, what are some things that we can do with it? Well, one of the first ones we're going to talk about is graphic organizers. Google Drawings lends itself really well to that because you can insert shapes and text and images. You can add connectors. You can drag and drop things around for interactivity, very much like you would do a lot of times with graphic organizers. And so what I put together is a number of things to help get you guys started with this, including a collection of about 40-ish graphic organizers that I've already made. And you guys can copy these, use these with your students, modify them, or hopefully create some of your own because I've got a help guide that goes into great detail on how to do so. How to do so. And I've also done a training video on this. Um, as you heard mentioned at the beginning of, the, of this session today, I do um, typically about two webinars a month where um, I'll take a topic and go into great depth into it. Uh, I'll use the, the an hour long each, and I have done a training specifically on just graphic organizers with drawings. And all of those resources, again, are there on my website at Control of Achieve. There's the help guide on Google Drawings for Graphic Organizers. There is the training video, the recorded video on that. And then here is my collection of 40 pre-made templates. Now, I've already got that open in another window here, so I'll pop over to there. And you'll see that these graphic organizers have all been created in Google Drawings. And you guys can use these any way you would like. If you would like to um, take them just as they are, make a copy and use them with your students, or if you want to modify them or just learn from them. So let's do this. Let's pick just a couple examples. We won't go through a ton of these, but we'll just show a few examples. You can kind of see how the process works. So for example, we could 
do a graphic organizer that is more of a drag and drop where you've created something and the student simply needs to move things around. So I'm going to start off with a really basic one. Here's one called Season Sorter. And we give a click on that one, and you'll see the preview of it. Basically, we've got winter, spring, summer, and fall, and then some pictures. And this is for a student to simply organize, to drag and drop these items into these different boxes. Now, if you want to get your own copy of this, when you go to preview it, all you have to do is go up into the top right-hand corner, and there's a little button up there, a little pop-out button. So this is the preview mode. But if you go to the little pop-out button up here in the top right and give that a click, it'll open that Google Drawing up into its own window. Now, for you guys, it's going to be view only. You won't be able to make a change to the original, which makes sense since it is a template. So what you would want to do once you open up the template is click File and then make a copy. And that will let you have your own copy of that template, and you can do whatever you want with it. So I'm going to go File, Make a Copy. And once I do so, now I've got my own copy of it. And again, I could use it um, with the whole class. I could push this out to the students. If you guys use Google Classroom, oh, this is a wonderful way to do that, because you could create an assignment where you attach this template to the assignment, and Google Classroom will make a copy automatically for every student in the class. And so that's a great way to push this out so all the students get a copy of this. But in this case, we could just come in here and say, oh, the turkey, that's going to be fall. And we'll grab the school bus. Usually we think of that as fall as well as we head back to school. We'll put uh, the snowman in winter. We'll put the sun in summer. We'll put some rain in spring. You get the idea. So it could be something that's just a drag and drop graphic organizer where the student is sorting things into there. At the same time, you could make it where they are finding their own pictures. And there's a built-in tool that's really great for this in Google Drawings. So if you go up to Tools and you go down to Research, the research tool is a panel that pops up over here on the side that lets you search for things including images. This is a great way for a student to go find their own pictures. So if they wanted to do something like find a picture of a sled, so we could type in something like sled clip art. And if they did that, they could say, I'm going to find my own images and I'm going to drag those over and put those into the drawing as well. And so it could be something where you're providing them with pictures, or it could be something where they're going out and they're finding their own images as well to fill that in. All right, so that's a very quick example. Let's look at a couple other ones here. All right. Well, there are some others. Uh, another one that's more of a drag and drop would be, for example, the butterfly life cycle. Here you've got several images already created, and the student is supposed to move them around to put them in the right order and then connect them with the curved connector to show the order in which this happens. So I'll go ahead and pop this out into its own window. And once I do that, I will go ahead and make my own copy as before so I don't mess up the original. I'll go File, Make a Copy. And now that I've made a copy of this, I can move these around to put them in the correct order. So let's start off with uh, the eggs that hatch into a caterpillar that goes into a chrysalis that emerges as a butterfly that lays more eggs. So they could put them in the right order, and then they could insert that curved connector we saw earlier, where they can click from one to the other and hook them together. Now, not only can they hook them together, but they can even add arrows. So they can add an arrow to the end of it to show the, the order this is going in. And then they could do that for the next, to the chrysalis, and then over to the butterfly, and then to the eggs again. And so this could be a way for students to be able to, again, express their understanding of relationships, how concepts fit together by using a pre-made graphic organizer. All right? And there's a bunch of other ones I've got in there that do that sort of thing, including something as complicated as, I've got one in here, we won't do it, <laughs> it would take a while, the circulation diagram. So if you want to see if you can follow the path of blood through the body, <laughs> you can put all of these in the proper order as well. Now, in addition to some of those, a lot of the other graphic organizers you're going to find here aren't so much drag and drop. They're more fill-in sort of things. So for example, here's one that's a word study diagram where the student could uh, type in their word that they're studying and then enter synonyms in the boxes over here, antonyms in the boxes over here, add their own definition, 
use the word in a sentence, and then go ahead and add a couple pictures from the research tool that relate to the word. So that would be an example of one that you're just filling in. Same thing, for example, like the sandwich chart. If a student needed to work on writing a paragraph, topic sentence is the bun, then we've got detail one, detail two, detail three, and a concluding sentence. And again, they can just double click inside of each of these shapes and they can type in their sentences. Other good examples may be if they're reading a story and they want to investigate um, the, uh, the story uh, map, we've got one where it's just beginning, middle, and end pretty straightforward, or another one here where we have the title of the story and then we talk about the characters, the setting, the problem, and the solution. And so there's a whole range of these sort of graphic organizers that I put together to sort of give you a place to, to branch off from. Uh, social studies one here on studying a state or a country, fill in the name, fill in information about famous people, natural resources, goods and services, cities, symbols, history or mathematics, I've got one here on quadrilaterals. Students can insert shapes from the insert shape menu to put in trapezoids and rectangles and a rhombus and a square and a parallelogram and a quadrilateral to show that they understand what the different types of quadrilaterals are and how they relate to each other, such as a square is actually a special kind of rectangle and it's a special kind of rhombus and so forth. In addition to that, I've also got some in here that are just very open-ended, very general, like Venn diagrams. So you can just use these where you fill in what the categories are. So maybe you come in here and we open this up in its own tab and we go ahead and make a copy of it. So let me make a copy of this Venn diagram. And in a case like this, you could type in your own categories. So maybe one of your categories is going to be um, animals that are green, and the other category is going to be something like um, uh, reptiles, for example. And then the students can, of course, add either text boxes. They could do that. They could insert text boxes and just type in text. Or they could go to insert images. Or they could go over to the research tool and find pictures of animals that fit these topics and drag those in. Now keep in mind, this is a good example of a collaborative graphic organizer. Instead of the student working on this just by themselves, this could be the whole class, all the students in the Google drawing at the same time, and they're all adding their own pictures into this. Finding animals that are both green and reptiles, finding some that are just reptiles, some that are just green. All right, so that's a quick overview of how Google Drawings could be used for graphic organizers. Again, feel free to use any of the pre-made ones I've got here or create some of your own. Basically, all I did was use the, the tools we've seen, adding uh, circles and squares and pictures and so forth onto a Google Drawing and then making it view only so that uh, people can't change the original but can always make their own copy of that and use. So all of that information, again, found on my website there, a help guide to tell you all about how to do that. Uh, a recorded video where I go into much more detail on it, and then the 40 plus templates that um, I've already put together. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about a second use of graphic organizers, or excuse me, of Google Drawings. So instead of just creating graphic organizers, we could also teach math with Google Drawings. So if you're especially an elementary or middle school teacher, I think it really fits best in those areas. A lot of topics like symmetry and shapes and fractions and pictographs and congruency and quadrilaterals and area and integers, they can really be translated well into a Google Drawing. So just like the last time, I do have a training video on this. I've got a help guide on this, and all of that as well can be found on that same main page we've been talking about all day on my Control Alt Achieve website. Um, there's a, a help guide that goes into great detail and has a lot of samples linked in there. Now I've already got that open, so let me pop over to it here. Let me zoom out just a bit. There we go. This is my Teaching Math with Google Drawings help guide. And if you go down through this guide, what you'll see is I've taken common core standards, typically from kindergarten through eighth grade. I pretty much stayed in that range. And what I do is I list the common core standard, and then I, then I give an example 
a link to a Google drawing, either a template or a finished example of how Google drawings could teach these different Common Core standards. So again, I'm not going to go through all of them. There's so many of them here, but let me just do a couple quick ones to kind of show you the idea. So something as simple as symmetry. Let's say you need to teach the idea of lines of symmetry. That is one of the Common Core standards. Here we have a Google drawing link that will shoot us out to a sample uh, template that you could use. I'll once again make a copy of this so I don't mess up the original. So I'll make a copy there and pop that over. Excellent. There we go. And once I get uh, this open, you'll see that what you can have the students do is use the insert line tool to be able to add lines of symmetry to these different shapes. Now, you could provide the shapes to the students, or maybe you have them create them. Again, you find the level that makes the most sense for your students. Maybe they draw the shapes. Maybe they add them in, and then they find the lines of symmetry. But in a case like this, I've already pre-made some shapes. So the student would simply come in here and say, I want to insert a line. And then they would simply draw lines of symmetry. Now again, if they want, they can make those dotted lines if that makes more sense. They can even change the color of the line if they want, maybe make it a little thicker so it's easier to see. And then the student could come through here and try to find all the different lines of symmetry for these different shapes. And some of them have a whole bunch of lines. Oops. Sorry about that. Some have a bunch of lines of symmetry, some only have one. So like uh, the heart over here is only going to have one line of symmetry there. And again, I can make that dotted and make that a different color and make that a little thicker if that helps people to see it a little bit better there. There we go. And of course, some shapes don't have any. This trapezoid down here actually doesn't have a line of symmetry. But uh, that would be a way for students to use Google Drawings to show lines of symmetry. Let me run through a whole bunch of other ones, though, just to show you some, some variety of the things people could do with this. So another fun one is um, learning about shapes. So at different grade levels, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, even up to seventh grade, um, we're, we have common core standards saying that students need to understand the different shapes, whether it's different types of quadrilaterals or different types of polygons. Well, a fun thing kids can do with Google Drawings is make their own art project using a required group of shapes. So in this case here, I have a sample where I created RoboDog 3000. <laughs> so this is a Google drawing where I added a lot of different quadrilaterals. So this would be an example where a student has to use trapezoids and rectangles, squares, parallelograms, a rhombus, a regular quadrilateral, uh, another trapezoid here, some more squares up here. And the instructions for the kids is they need to make their own uh, art project. They need to design you know, uh, an, an image uh, using all of the quadrilaterals are using different types of triangles. And again, they're simply going up to the insert menu and they're inserting these shapes into there. They're coloring them. And in the background, I got that just again by using my research tool, searching for images, and I just typed in space background. But you could type in, you know, underwater background or whatever background you want to make your, uh, your image a little bit uh, more exciting. And then the students could use a Google document to type up all the shapes they used and where they got used in that drawing. So that gives them not just critical thinking, but creativity. And that's another one of the four C's. An important thing is we want students to make sure that they have opportunities to be creative and show creative ways um, to show their, their understanding of information in creative ways. Let's just touch on a couple other quick ones. Another fun one here would be to create uh, pictographs. Here is a finished product where I've used a Google drawing to create a pictograph. Now to do this one, I basically inserted a table. And so I simply came in here and drug out a table of a certain size. I think I did like a six by six table. And then once I had the table in there, I used some clip art that again, I simply got from the research tool. I just came over here and searched for images and I typed in dog clip art, I believe is all I did for that one. And when I typed in dog clip art, there he is. <laughs> There's the guy I found right there. And I drug him over to add him in. And each dog represents two people. So then I also used a special tool called the cropping tool to cut some of them down in half so they would only represent one. So you can simply click on your image. And there's a crop tool up here that allows you to go in and crop down. I won't change him, but you can crop down an image to half size or quarter size or so forth. And so if your students need to create pictographs, 
Google Drawings is a great way. Throw in a table, add your text, find a nice piece of clip art to fill up your pictograph. Other ones that are fun that we can take a quick look at, and I'm going to skip over a bunch here and encourage you guys to go back and investigate these on your own, uh, but here's one on adding integers. So one thing we want to teach students is how to add positive and negative numbers. I'll make a copy of this so I don't mess up the original. Show you real quick how this works. Basically, in a case like this, what we're doing is we're letting reds represent positive and yellow represent negative. And so I can come in here and I can create my problem. So I'll say, let's add uh, positive 3 with, we'll do a negative 7, and we'll say, what do we get as a result? Well, if I'm having my reds represent positives, I need three positives. And if my yellows are representing negatives, let's drag over six, seven of those. So there's my problem, three positives and seven negatives. Well, what I'm using is a special option in Google Drawings that allows you to set transparency. Normally, when you take a shape and you put it on top of another, it just blocks it out. But I actually went in to my um, fill color here, and I set a custom color on these that gives it transparency. So when I take this yellow and I put it on top of the red, it actually turns it orange. They kind of blend together. So I can see that a positive and a negative cancel each other out. They become orange. And so when it's done, these have canceled each other out. Three positive and three negatives have zeroed each other out. And I'm left with one, two, three, four negatives. And so there's my final answer. And I can type in my negative four there at the end. All right. And then finally, last example I'll show, there's great ones on area, all sorts of things. All the way up to algebra, though, if you've ever done manipulative, manipulatives with your kids, you may have done algebra tiles. And so what I've done is I've created a template that already has pre-made algebra tiles that you can copy and paste over into the grid to show multiplying uh, binomials and monomials and polynomials. And that way, it can all be done digitally without having to worry about purchasing or losing uh, physical algebra tiles. All right, well, let's get to at least one last way we could use Google Drawings in school. So we've seen graphic organizers, we've seen mathematics. What about desktop publishing? Well, one of the things that we hear about with Google Apps sometimes is people say, I love Google Apps, I love Docs and Sheets and Slides, it's fantastic, but how do I do things like newsletters and brochures and greeting cards? In other words, Where's the replacement for Microsoft Publisher? Well, there, there really isn't. I mean, Google Docs, it does some of those things, but not quite. Um, Google Apps really doesn't have built in, by default, a desktop publishing tool like you would see with Microsoft Publisher. Now, there are other tools out there um, that you can use um, that are fantastic. But if you're creative, you can actually use Google Drawings to cover some of those things. And that's because, as we've seen, you can add. Uh, images and text. You can position them anywhere. You can rotate them anywhere. That actually lends itself pretty well for making things like brochures and newsletters and flyers because you've got a lot more freedom in a drawing than you have in a Google Doc. So for an example, I went ahead and created some templates for greeting cards. And again, this is all linked in on the website there. You'll see I've got a blog post on creating greeting cards with a short training video on that. And I've got two templates here, a portrait and a landscape template. I'll open up uh, the landscape one here just as an example to show you. And I'll make a copy of it again so that I don't mess up the original. I'll always got to remember to do that. Since I have edit rights, I could <laughs> mess up the original. And I'll try not to do that. Um, and so basically what I've done is I made a template here, which is just a regular Google drawing, where I've divided it up into four sections. Because what's going to happen is this greeting card, when you're done, it's going to get folded in half and in half again to make a, you know, a greeting card that would have the front outside, so what people see on the front, the back outside, so what you see on the back, and then the inside, the top and the bottom of the inside that's going to fold open. And so you could come in here and you could create your, um, you know, your welcome information, whatever you want to put on the front of your greeting card. So if it's a birthday card or if it's um, a get well card or whatever, you can type that in on the front here. And of course, you can add images like we've seen. Simply go to the insert image option to add images that way or simply use the research tool and search for images over here. That's perfectly fine. So you can add images or text to the front, add stuff to the back, and then you can fill in the top inside 
and the bottom inside with your greeting card message. Now the only thing you've got to be careful of is when you print this out, remember you've got to fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And so what that means is this front outside actually needs to be upside down because otherwise if you print it as it is right now and you fold this and you fold it twice, it's going to become upside down. So one of the cool things you can do is you can use the flipping option inside of Google Drawing. So whatever I type in here or whatever images I put in here, I can go to Arrange, Rotate, and I can flip it. So I can flip that vertically when I'm all done and I'm ready to go. And so whatever I put on this first one up here that's going to be the front outside, I can flip that before I print it. And that way it will actually print out properly. And of course the gray boxes, that's just sort of like guidelines to keep margins. So when you're done, you should delete the gray uh, boxes around there so you're just printing out your card with your pictures and your text in there. And so that's just one example. But you really can do a lot of things. You could create a trifold brochure in a Google Drawing by creating three text boxes and providing area for the students to add images and add titles and so forth. All right. Well, that gets us, I think, pretty close to the end of the time that we were going to spend on that. And we want to give some time at the end for people to be able to ask questions as well. So I'm going to just do a quick wrap up and then turn that back over to the rest of you folks. Um, so as a reminder, all of that information can be found at tiny.cc slash Kurtz45. That takes you to my website, controlaltachieve.com, and it dumps you right into the page on Google Drawings resources. The general overview of how to use it, how to use it for graphic organizers, for math, and for desktop publishing. Now, of course, while you're there, please feel free to visit the blog itself, the home page there. You'll see all of my, I do about uh, three or four blog posts a week, and so uh, definitely you can check those out. And then my general resources page goes into lots of other topics in Google Apps. So if you want to learn about forms or docs or hangouts or special needs, whatever it might be. And then I also have a link to my webinars. Try to do about two of those a month. You can see I've got 20 recorded webinars from the past covering lots of different topics and lots of other ones coming up here as well in the future. Alrighty. Well, let me go ahead and I will see if I can turn this back over to you guys now. See if I can find the right button here. <laughs> That's always the, the challenge here. Um, or if somebody there on the other side knows how to, how to take control of the back over, feel free to. <laughs> there we go. All right. Thanks so much, Eric. I did manage to capture some questions. Some of them, though, were answered during the presentation. Um, All right. One was, can you use scripts with drawings, like add size, color, shapes, add size or color shapes with scripts? Um, I'm not sure if I'm catching the question. You're saying, can we, um, obviously we can definitely change um, color and size and, and so forth of anything we put inside of a Google drawing, but were, you, were they saying with, with scripts, like scripting? I think so. I don't know if Doug is still in the room. He is. He may be able to clarify for us. Hmm. Um, because if, if I'm hearing he that right, if it's something it about, if it's something about scripting, like um, mm -hmm. uh, like programmatically doing it, no. But anything, yeah, anything that we have inside of a Google drawing, um, we can go in and we can highlight things, and we can of course change the size. We can change the color. We can change the font, um, whether it's a text or whether it's um, an image. All of those things can be adjusted, but it is manually being done. All of that is being done by hand. None of that would be scripted or done programmatically. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. How do, how do Google tools work on an iPad? Well, when it comes to using things on mobile, um, you've got two options. One is 
see if Google has created a mobile version for it. Now, they have not for drawings. There's a mobile version of Docs. There's a mobile version of Sheets. There's a mobile version of Slides. So for those tools, you can use the specifically designed mobile version. Now, unfortunately, there's not one for drawings. So in a case like that, the only thing you really can do is go to your Google Drive through your web browser, not through the mobile app. And then when you're at Google Drive, you could create a Google Drawing from there inside of your web browser. Now, how well, how well will it run? Well, it should run fine, but it's probably just a little bit more difficult to, to do that in a non-mobile optimized tool. Um, so, you know, your mileage will vary as to how easy it is to drag things around and type into it and so forth because you're not using a mobile optimized. You're actually using the full desktop version through your web browser. So um, I typically don't do that. Um, I, I pretty much live in a uh, traditional desktop environment. I do have a tablet, but I use that more for consuming information rather than creating. I'll probably fire up my Chromebook or my desktop or my laptop if I'm going to be creating something. Okay. Um. I, I think this is this this might have been answered. Um, can students draw images and scan them, such as to JPEG, and then add that to a drawing? Absolutely. So when you saw me adding images, there's two main ways. Uh, one is the insert image option, and when you do that, you have six options that pop up. So if you say insert image, the very first one is upload. And so yes, anything that somebody has created elsewhere, you can upload right into the drawing. But then there's other tools like take a snapshot, add from your drive, run a Google search. But then of course there's also the research tool and some other ways as well. But absolutely, anything somebody has created on their own, click insert image and use the very first option to upload. Great. Uh, how can you put images inside shapes? You certainly can. Um, they're basically going to be uh, a, an image on top of a shape, mm -hmm. and then what you can do is you can group them together so that they don't come apart. So it's not really that you're double clicking in the shape and then inserting the image. You're basically adding the shape, adding the image dragging the image on top of the shape and just making it smaller so it you know, kind of fits inside. Mm -hmm. And then by selecting both of them and clicking Arrange, you can then click Group. And you can group objects together so they stay locked together. That way when you move one, the other moves with it. And that can be really nice if you've got a bunch of objects that you want to keep together rather than moving independently of each other. Yeah. Good. Um, how did you set the, the transparency with the yeah. Um, I'll describe it real fast, but if you go to my website, Control Alt Achieve, and if you go to the video on, um, I've got a video there specifically on creating the, um, the integer example. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I show how to do it in that integer video. Basically, if you are setting the fill color of an object, and if you go to custom rather than choosing one of the colors that are there, you will see on the far right hand a slider that you can slide up mm -hmm. and down to adjust the transparency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, this wasn't a question on drawing, but is there a way to enter data in sheets and then automatically populate forms or docs from that? No, no. Uh, there's no connection between drawings and the other programs as far as um, that. Um, usually when that works, it's because you've got a tool like Docs or Sheets that allows you to use add-ons. So Docs, mm -hmm. Sheets, and Forms all allow for add-ons or scripting. At the moment, Google has not released the ability to do add-ons or scripting for slides or for drawings. Neither one of those mm -hmm. have that ability. If they do turn that on, then yeah, suddenly you're going to have interactivity between those tools. Right now, though, yeah, if you're using Google Docs and Sheets, you can do mail merges, you can do all those sort of things. That's because scripting and add-ons has been turned on for those tools. And hopefully, we'll get it for drawings and slides someday as well. 
And the last question I see is, can you embed videos in Google Drawings? Yeah, um, when it comes to embedding um, videos, uh, let's see if there's any easy way other than, no, I mean, typically I do a link out to a video. I'm trying to see mm -hmm. if there's any other way to get one in there. No, no, I don't see that. In a slide you can do that, but no, in drawings, the best thing you're going to be able to do is just add a hyperlink. And I know I didn't show hyperlinks, but anything you put into a drawing, you can also add a hyperlink. That's one of the options under insert is insert link, mm -hmm. and that link could shoot out to a video, but no, it won't actually put the live video running inside of the drawing. Okay. Well, again, thank you so much. It was a lot Absolutely. of very useful examples and information for us. And I will now turn the show over to Peggy, who will talk about who's coming up next. Thank you, Eric. Boy, have you gotten us excited. Now you have all those great resources to go back to and spend our entire weekend creating and exploring. So thank you very much. And we hope all of you will come back every week to join us on Classroom 2.0 Live. Next week, we have another fabulous tool we want to introduce you to, and that is called Participate Learning. It's an amazing curiosity tool, and Brad Spearson is going to be sharing with us. The following week, we have an excellent presentation by Kathy Beck on global Google mapping. You're going to be amazed at all of the things she has to share related to using more Google tools. And on March 26th, we're going to get an update on Remind.com. They've been doing a lot of updating and adding new features, and we're excited to have um, Jordan Pedraza and some teachers come and join us and tell us how they're using these. Then. April 9th, we have an amazing 8th grade student coming to share with us about being a maker. And all of her presentation centers around the drill press. You will be in awe when you hear what she has to share. And then the final um, date here on this slide, April 16th, we won't have a, a show on our site because that is the day of the Den Spring Virtual Conference conference, and all of us love to go to those sessions. So we'll all go there instead of here. So please plan on joining us for all of those. And one other thing, if you haven't heard about the library um, 2.016 mini conference, that is for everyone, not just librarians, but it's hosted by some great librarians. And they have one day coming up where they're going to be focusing on privacy in the digital age. And it's on March 16th from 12 to 3 Pacific time. So you can check out that link in the live binder and see what time it is your time. And they'll record everything, too. So you may want to go back and check out those recordings. So Lori, go ahead and take us out. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his resources together for PD, as well as host your own webinar. And if you do sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate classroom and make the session public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this link. Usually each month we have a featured teacher. You can nominate yourself too. Whoops, too fast. Uh, as you exit the session, the survey tab should open up in your browser. You can also take the survey from the chat box. It's also in the Live Binder in that Resources section of the Live Binder. When you complete the survey at the end, you can request a professional development certificate, which will print out with your name. Please make sure this goes to a personal email address and not a school. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. The audio and video collections are both in iTunes U, as well as still an RSS feed and the full recordings in the Classroom 2.0 live website. Special thanks again to Eric Kurtz, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 
2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming.